Okay, good, because you guys did two. You did IMV and a close-up. Close-up is it, yes. Okay, so which one was more complicated, do you think? Uh, it's the close-out visit because there's a lot of data to be reviewed and... Uh, so you thought for sure that's more more uh, complicated by far? Yes. Okay. And you get to use the uh, e-source too, the CREO, clinicalresearch.io. Mm -hmm. It's like my favorite program now for our site and we're going to start using it for everybody. What did you think of, because I we added you as an external user mm -hmm. to do your SDV for the screening visit. Yes. So what, what did you learn during the... What did you learn during that screening? Because you did a real screening here with a patient. Yes. Or you shadowed a real screening. Yes. What did you learn that you did not learn in the class, but you learned here? Uh, in the class, when we are listening to the topics, it kind of felt easy, but we didn't know like how it would be uh, when we do it practically. But yesterday, we got to shadow the... Uh, Toby doing it yes. and then uh, he filled out all the information and then you gave us access so it was pretty easy. And today? Today it was good too. And you can still do the STV on today, you still have access. Uh, we still have Yeah, one. you okay. still have access so you can do the STV today. Okay. So as far as your background is interesting because you're a foreign trained pharmacist mm -hmm. and then you've worked in, a, you've worked in with Big Pharma, mm -hmm. right, but not in research and validation in research. so it's GMP good manufacturing practices. But what was very interesting to me when I was doing your resume and what you definitely have to talk about in the video cover letter is your experience with, like your education. You actually took a real, um, you majored in clinical research, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? I did my master's in regulatory affairs, but uh, we can pick a lot of electives. In the electives, I, I'm, I'm actually interested in clinical trials and that's the reason I picked few clinical trial subjects in that. Okay. So all my electives are related to that. Uh, I got interested in clinical trials, but somehow I couldn't get into clinical trials because I don't have the real-time experience. When did you get interested and why? I got interested while I was doing my master's. because oh, during the studies? During the studies. So you just picked it randomly? That yeah. You said it sounds interesting. It sounds like it's a good career. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then I picked it up, but unfortunately, I couldn't get job in that since I don't have uh, experience with That's the right. clinical research. That's right. So I was doing quality and validation. But now you do, and now you're gonna shadow me as well for an oncology study okay. up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do that. I'm going in September. I'm gonna go again in October. Every four to six weeks. Okay. But so you're gonna shadow your CV. Are, it shows the experience with the SCS now. Mm -hmm. since you started with the academy as okay. an intern and quality assurance specialist. Okay. Uh, but what did you learn from the, what issues did you have with uh, either of the reports? What topics are you still not uh, too familiar with or too comfortable with? Uh, monitoring visit was pretty good because we got to see it practically and then everything was entered correct. But the closeout visit, we didn't get a chance to review all the patients, but for the patients that we reviewed, we didn't find the uh, GDP was missing, good documentation practices, somewhere where the PA has to uh, sign it. It was not signed in few places, okay. PI oversight. So you found a lack of PI oversight? Lack of PI oversight and... Very common, very, very common. That happens a lot. You're going to see it. Um, you actually see it in every, ranging from the big institutions to the small ones. Uh, oftentimes, one of the things PIs do is rely a lot on sub -eyes. Okay. This is what I see at the big academic clinics, mm -hmm. where they have like a hundred staff on the, for one study. The PI will rely on sub eyes a lot, okay. unless it's their own patient. Um, at the smaller clinics, the PIs rely on the coordinators okay. a lot. So, yeah, monitors are always trying to document um, PI oversight. And what are some of the ways, and these are interview questions that I'm asking you. So, like, what are the ways as a CRA that you uh, look for PI oversight? What are some of the things you do at an interim monitoring visit to assess PI oversight? So we'll check the range on the protocol and see when the PI has to sign the any laboratory reports and all. And if PI signs it before date, then it's good. And we also see the delegation log. So whoever does the procedures, by looking at the delegation log, we'll get to know that whether they are trained on it, whether PI gave, you know, the so and so person to do that responsibility and 
uh, we can also look their training and the curriculum. I mean, yeah. the training. If they are trained on it and PI gave it properly, assigned delegated duty, then it's. I mean, we are okay with them doing it. Or else, then that could be an issue. But what are some other like so example of like what you found with the PI didn't write a notes mm -hmm. or didn't so no progress notes at all for the visit. Or? It was not the progress note. He didn't sign the laboratory results that was uh, generated from the patient. I see. I so see. I'm not sure how he. So not signing the results. Okay, and what would how would you handle that? Uh, this is another interview question. You know, how, what would you do if you go to an IMV and you noticed a lab results were not signed by the PI? Uh, it depends. I mean, if the if he didn't si uh, see them or sign them for a long period of time, then it's obviously a protocol deviation because oversight is missing, and that's the one main reason where FDA can give you a uh, 480. Three. 43 Four. warning letters, yeah. yeah. You learned about that in the academy. Yes. Yeah. So, but is that a deviation, protocol deviation, or is that something, what is that actually? Yeah, it depends on the protocol, right? If the okay. protocol mandates the PI to sign it within Correct. a week or something, and if he doesn't sign it for two or three weeks, then obviously it's a protocol deviation. Good. You answered that perfectly. That's exactly what they want to see. Now, what if the, what if the labs were all normal? but the PI didn't sign it. Is that still a deviation? Uh, yes, because as per the protocol, he's supposed to do it. Uh, so that means he's supposed to do it. If it is documented that you are you are meant to do it, then you have to do it, right? Yes. So how would you handle that as a CRA at that visit? Mm, I'm going to talk to the study coordinator and see why the PI hasn't signed it yet. And if I get a chance to meet with the PI, then I'll definitely meet him and discuss it with him. So the, maybe for the first time, I'll just say it's, I mean, you have to sign it and you have to be accurate as the protocol it mandates, you need to sign it within a week or something. But if it keeps on happening, then I think we should take it to sponsor level and we have to let them notify that the PA is not doing a proper oversight. Yeah. So the way to do it is like you see in that report, mm -hmm. you see where the, every section has comments. Mm -hmm. So in that comment, even for that report, even if it's something minor, like PI signed the lab, but didn't put NCS or CS mm -hmm. for out of range values. So let's say just for one value, okay? You will put that in your monitoring report in the comments. Mm -hmm. Subject three, visit whatever it was, PI did not initial CS or NCS in the lab results. Okay, that may or may, like you said, you were right, that may or may not be a protocol deviation. Most likely it is. But usually it's the sponsor that decides if it's deviation or not, not the CRA. Okay. So unless it's clear that it's a deviation. In those kind of areas where it's unclear, or if it's more of a GCP violation, um, you put everything in your report, okay, in the comments. That's what the comments are there for. So in the comments, um, you would put, uh, I observed, or CRA observed, you never put I. You put the CRA observed. And then ideally you would discuss with the PI um, what happened and was it actually NCS or was it CS. And if it's CS, that's a problem, yes. right? Because th what does that mean if it was CS? That means it's related to the drug? Not necessarily. It may or may not be. But if it's CS, it probably means a follow-up. Safety follow-up uh, uh, test needs to be done. It has to be For done. sure it's an adverse event, unless it's part of the medical history. Mm -hmm. But chances are it's not if it's CS now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of those kind of things that go on um, when you're monitoring. Mm -hmm. And that's just from the safety aspect. That's not from uh, anything else. Yes. What other issues did you have? B didn't see any uh, in the regulatory binder. Uh, some of the things were missing. For which visit, IMV or the close out? Uh, for the close out visit. Okay, what was missing? And then that's in a, in a real IMV. If that actually happened, or at a real close out visit, if that happened, you may or may not be able to close out the site that day, right? Because yes. if like. The delegation log needs to be end date for every person, right? Mm -hmm. If, let's say, uh, uh, the PI is not available to do this, that's going to be an action item. Mm -hmm. So you can't even close out the site. 
And when is the site officially closed? Interview question. Because on your CV it says close out visits. Yes. You gotta know. When is it officially closed out? So when all the um, IP is given to the patients, IP accountability is done, all the data that's uh, required for the thing is generated, and everything is documented, and PI signed their labs and everything. Yes, but there's one big thing that's usually the last thing before a site's closed out officially. Uh, IP accountability? No. A big one. I'm missing something. It starts with I, but the next letter is not P. <laughs> R. I R. I R. B. Oh, I R B. You have to submit a report. That's obvious, right? You have to. I R B close out report. Mm -hmm. But that's when when that's done, it's officially closed out mm -hmm. with I R B. Now there may still be action items. Okay, like uh, you're right. I P accountability, like Monica showed you guys mm -hmm. today, right? That's a closed out study. The monitor comes, seals the box, right? Um, delegate everything on that report that you see needs mm -hmm. to be done for the site to be officially closed even if there's one action item outstanding mm -hmm. so that was kind of a trick question but uh, you would have been right too in an interview with the IP but the IRB is really the main one they want to hear but you're right you're also right it's li it's literally everything on the if there's even one action item mm -hmm. that's incomplete it's not officially closed out by the sponsor Okay. But the most important thing is that the IRB has the status of closed. Okay. All right, even if there's other action items, as long as you can get that IRB close out, ideally that same day. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when I was coordinating, I don't coordinate anymore, but when I was coordinating, the monitor on a close out visit with me mm -hmm. would like have, have me do the close out visit and show them like while they're there that that's at least done. Okay. So that they take a copy of that with oh, yeah. them for their trial master file, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know what's a trial master file? Yes. So we use intralinks for that, mm -hmm. but it could be something as simple as Dropbox, could be something fancier like Viva. Um, there's different vendors, yes. right? Okay, so you're, you're due for, you are familiar with those things. So I think you have a good chance of uh, doing, you just need to do a few more shadowing, like some shadowing visits mm -hmm. with me, try to intern. I know somebody in uh, the Bay Area that probably will, uh, be interested in interviewing you and you never know maybe like study coordinator okay. but ultimately you're gonna be CRA, CRA. Okay. what issues did you find besides that like anything anything that you're not so sure about um, no everything else huh? looks pretty good and then the IMV uh, were you guys able during the IMV to look at the regulatory yesterday because um, I know the source was e-source but did you look at the regulatory because the regulatory is still paper for that study no, we didn't look at that. Okay. We are just looking at the e-source. So that's an interview question too, okay? okay. I'm going to ask you now, how many of you are a job interviewer? Okay. 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 So it left, what do you do when, and these are all STAR, situational task action response, right? Yes. What do you do when you go do an IMV and the regulatory binder is not available? You have to request someone to look where the regulatory binder is because without having the regulatory binder on the site how can you do it like that is the main thing that you go to if you have any doubts or any queries right right what if the coordinator is sick and these are real interview questions what if the coordinator is sick and there's a new one and they don't know where the regulatory binder is what do you do maybe you have to reschedule your visit talk to the coordinator and see uh, no incorrect okay. so Try to do, because look what's on the IMV report, okay? Regulatory is just one section. But it has all the important sections, right? Not everything. So you can do SDV okay. and SDR without reg binder. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can also do some IP accountability if it's actual pills. Okay. With If they keep them in the source. So the answer would be, and you can go in many different ways, but the one you said was probably the worst one. Okay. Because, see, the sponsor, if they flew you out, they want you to do something useful over there yes. that's right so try to get the source mm -hmm. and at least do SDV fill out as much as you can of your report okay okay um, but IP even action item that the regulatory thing is missing we need to see it yeah 
The reaction item. Okay, coordinator. And in your report, how would you put it? What would you write in your report? Uh, like in that comment section for regulatory. Uh, I would say I would like to review it next time when I was here on site because I yeah. didn't get a chance to see it this time. The CRA was not able to meet with the coordinator and therefore the staff did not provide the regulatory binder. Maybe the PI doesn't know where it is. But sometimes the PI can do IP accountability. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the PI does know where it is. Okay. So even before we get to the SDV, SDR, when you get there and they tell you, no, the coordinator's not here, mm -hmm. you can say, is the PI here? Mm -hmm. Or some site director here? Somebody that can get me my files that I need. Okay. Okay. So sometimes the PIs do know where that stuff is. But uh, the chances are rare for that to happen, right? Because you schedule your visit ahead of But time. it happens enough to where I get this email from people maybe once a month. Okay. Where they ask me, hey Dan, what do I answer in when they're asking okay. me this exact thing? Okay. So it's, it's common. It's okay. common. Um, so they, you got to get as much as you can done. Okay. Okay, usually somebody's able to bring you the source. Okay. And somebody's can if you ask enough people, they're going to be able to find you the investigator, uh, the, the uh, regulatory binder, which okay. is also called the investigator site file. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's good. Okay, so that you know how to answer those kind of questions. Those are the kind of things they're going to ask. All the stuff you've done here. Okay. You know, just be familiar with the platforms. E-source, they're going to say, which platform did you use for e-source? The one that we used yesterday? Yeah, but they don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> See, you gotta know. You have to know. Okay. Okay, also TMF. Which which platform did you use for TMF? I don't remember the name. Exactly. You gotta know those things. Right? Okay. Those, they're gonna ask you. They could. Okay. If you wanna be pre over prepared. Okay. Just in case. Okay. Um, anything else? Nothing much. You have a great background. I think you can do really well, and you know the material. Just remember the, um, the platforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're gonna do your video cover letter. Okay. So sixty seconds or less. You gotta give me a brief like. Um, what are you thinking of saying? I'll just say. <clears throat> Who, why, and what are you doing now? Right. Yes. So give me like a example, just so we could practice one. 22nd one right now. Now? Yes. <laughs> I'll just say that um, I'm a pharmacist. I did my master's in regulatory affairs, drug, medical devices, and biologics. And now um, I graduated from CR Academy. I'm doing some shadowing work with you guys on some schizophrenia studies and irritable bowel syndrome, for which we also wrote a closeout visit. And, uh, and soon to be oncology. Yeah, soon to be oncology. Perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, and you'll do well, and we'll be in touch. Sure, that's for sure. Thank you.